Welcome to another Stock Odds podcast. This is Odds and Ends with Rob Friesen and Dave Singh. Hey, Rob, how's it going today? Not too bad. Thank you for asking. Thanks. Well, we're coming up here in our Thanksgiving week, and it's a little bit different of a week. We have um, Thursday off and Fridays an abbreviated session, and we're also approaching the final five days of, a, of the month. We typically start on Wednesday, but um, I think we're almost starting tomorrow with our first full five days of the month, and just wanted to get your take on uh, what you see for Thanksgiving week usually and what the data says here and and uh, go from there. Yeah, so, um, I, yeah, why don't you cover um, some of the sectors after I first kind of give a picture of what I see in the overall markets here. Sure. Um, so going to... Um, first, I want to talk about the U.S. dollar. Um, reports of its death are greatly exaggerated. <laughs> you know, it's really trading at the midpoint uh, for the last, uh, you know, five years. It's really at that midpoint. So it's not at its lows. It's not at its highs. But it is on the way up. So it keeps uh, it keeps increasing every time we talk about you know, oh, the U.S. dollar might be weakening, it it, it, it turns around and goes back up. So, um, you know, a good, way to, a good way to view it is really look at a, a monthly chart of it since 1998. You know, that's the year I joined Bright uh, and started trading with Bright Trading, um, January 10th, 1998. And, uh, and since then, it's the dollars right back where it started, right? So it, to me, to me, it hasn't moved. But no, it's uh, you know how people always uh, talking about the dollar uh, going down and down and down to nothingsville. Well, it's uh, it's definitely not. And part of that reason that it's sort of bounced back is this talk about uh, interest rates potentially rising, which is usually good for a currency, right? Uh, so um, that being said, let's go to uh, look at our futures for the indices and so on. So when they opened today, they uh, they did uh, have a little bit of uh, movement there um, out of the gate. We kind of popped up and then we pulled back a little bit and then we we're rising. So uh, the Dow has been the weakest recently uh, of the Dow, S&P and NASDAQ 100. NASDAQ 100 has been the strongest. It's It's been on fire and it just keeps on going up. Uh, S and P next, and and the Dow is is lagging behind that. And then the Russell had broken out of its uh, channel, and then and really really rallied significantly that first week. Um, and then it started to uh, pull back uh, after the first week. It's been sort of sliding ever since, and it's gotten back down to test that resistance area. So do we go with the argument that? former resistance for literally nine months is now support could be right um so looking at the futures over the last few hours here russell is holding up pretty good it's up 0.56 percent since the close on friday and the Dow Jones is only up 0.3, S&P is up 0.29, and Nasdaq's up 0.3. So all the others are in line, and Russell is in the lead at the moment. We'll see if that holds. We'll see if they want to come back to the um, to the Russell uh, for this this last five days. Um, I'd like to hear what you have to say on that for the seasonality aspect of it. Um, moving on into energy. Uh, oil has really rolled over on the daily um, for November so far. The first week it was up again, and then it's rolled over. So it's kind of been tracking similar to what we saw with the Russell. And um, and that's across um, heating oil, cr Brent crude, and WTI. Natural gas, you know, has been pretty benign for a couple months here anyway. Um Moving into the metals, I don't see much going on here for the metals. Um, if we look at if we look at a monthly, you know, we we have we have risen over the month of November so far for both gold and silver, um, but there's a long way to go before we you know get back to 2020 highs and so on. 
Copper has uh, been doing the best, but it's chop. It's just choppy right now. Keep that in mind. What concerns me is in the area of the of the grains. Um, well, and coffee. You know, <laughs> co coffee, for example, has uh, gone from just from the beginning of the year. It was at trading at a hundred dollars, and it's now at two hundred and thirty three. So we don't need our mm -hmm. coffee to get more expensive. Um, Cotton has gone from $50 in 2020 to now 116. Um, sugar is up from 10 in the middle of 2020, and it's now at 20, so it's doubled. Um, so, and the other grains here, we've got oats has gone from just the beginning of the year from about 290, it's at 774. How much of the world relies on oats? Or how much of, you know, feed, for example, is oats? Um, canola, you know, is it used for cooking and stuff? Um, I don't know how widely used it is, but I would say pretty significant. It's gone from 500 at the beginning of the year to now 1,006. Uh, wheat from 500 to 843. So again, this argument of inflation is just more short term, you know, whether it's going to have a long duration, that argument is going to be back and forth still for, for a while. But I'm just concerned about these costs, not just for, you know, North America, but I mean, imagine other places in the world that rely on soybean oil or canola oil or oats or wheat. Uh, rice hasn't been too bad, actually. Um, you know, it's doing okay, but corn, corn has gone up from around 300 to 578. It's off of its highs a bit, but uh, canola and oats are trading near their high or at their high. All right, so we've got some, uh, we've got some inflation. indicators here that yeah. say that prices are still rising in many of the staples, the things that we need to live. And coffee is definitely a necessity, okay? <laughs> I'm just saying, if you wake up early on the West Coast, it's necessary. <laughs> it's like staple plus healthcare, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So uh, over to you, What's what do you see? Oh, yeah, what? you're right about this. Uh, we, got a, we got a bit of a problem here with the timeline on this last five days because we've got the holiday on Thursday and a half day on Friday. This really puts a monkey wrench. So let me just frame, since I've been in the business a long time, what normally happens with this week, okay? You get bonds closing early on Wednesday. You can often get a pretty big rally on Wednesday in front of Thanksgiving because of the lighter volume. A lot of people are traveling or they're in transition or they're getting ready for Thanksgiving. It's lighter volume. And you can see sometimes a very significant rally on the Wednesday, especially the last sort of hour of the day and uh, the bonds close early, okay? Thursday, we're closed. Friday's a half day. Um, again, volume is lighter. And uh, with the half day, you know, anything can happen. I mean, it's, I've seen one year we opened way down and then we rallied all the way back to a positive. Uh, you know, that was the, an incident with Dubai and Abu Dhabi and all that. So um, they, uh, anything can happen. Um, it is a time of year where it can be targeted uh, terrorism. We don't like to talk too much about that, but but there can be some uh, concern for this time of year. Um, but what group has tended to dominate, you know, is obviously the retailers. And Amazon has been just a massive, you know, impact to all retailers. But we're seeing consumer spending is is really wanting to be there and they're willing to pay the higher prices so we still expect retailers to you know to hold their own and do okay um and it is true that it comes earlier and earlier because you know competition and people trying to leapfrog and get ahead of the you know the sales and stuff like that get out to their their subscribers and their patrons um earlier um, and then Cyber Monday, it's like, well, everything's cyber now. So, you know, is there really a Cyber Monday? But there still is, you know, there still is a time for, uh, you know, excess sales and things like that. So anyway, um, that's normally what happens. We usually are bullish 
on Wednesday. We're usually bullish on the Friday half day. We're usually bullish even on the Monday. That's what it's been historically. We'll uh, we'll have to see how it plays out uh, this time around. Okay, over to you, Dave. Well, Cyber Monday has become Cyber November. I've seen <laughs> Be, well not, Cyber not all year now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, go ahead. I, before the call, I did some research too. Again, the week of Thanksgiving, it's bullish overall. The best two days within that are Monday and the Wednesday. Um, that, that ties in with what you said earlier. And um, I went to the seasonality almanac to see which sectors might hold up better than others. And um, some of the biotech is expected to do well. XRT, XLY. So retail, consumer discretionary, QQQ tech is still strong. Uh, underperformers are expected to be gold, silver, and oil. So that's kind of exactly what you just talked about earlier in the call. And uh, then can we, can we have confidence? Like, could we do? Can we have confidence to do a basket? Let's say, just looking at the ETFs. If I was to buy XBI, to buy IBB, to buy XRT, to buy XLY. This is all on our almanac for the last five trading days. It's uh, free for everybody out in Radio Land here too to uh, access. And then on the short side, GDXJ, which is the, the junior miners, SLV, GDX, which is the senior miners, and XOP, which is the uh, drillers. Um, are we, you know, are we able to just go along those and short those? Do you have the confidence for that? Um, with the macro background and the stats? Yeah, I mean, there's almost four or 5% for the week expected within that, those, those, um, those ETFs you just mentioned. Right. So, so then, so you could you could either go with the ETFs, or you could go and drill into what's the best candidates within those groups. You know, if you're going to focus on on uh, discretionary, what are the best names? If you're going to focus on, you know, biotech, what's the best names, right? If you're going to focus short on GDX, which which ones are you have confidence to be short? Like, look at your odds. Go in and and. Uh, you know, put it together the best, the best combinations you can. Okay, back to you. And then of the ETFs, I think XRT is expected to do extremely well um, relative to the spider. Two point two percent relative to one point three percent for the for the spider. And XLY is a similar story, about two percent versus one point three. And um, oil is expected to underperform quite drastically. And um, QQQ again, slight outperformance to the spider. SMH, the chips again. So, but then I went to the the XRT got me thinking. This is a week about shopping. Retailers are in vogue. I'm sure on CNBC, the talking heads are going to talk about Black Friday sales and Cyber Monday. So I went to three retailers that I know well, and this is where we shop a lot, Target, Amazon, and Costco. And I just want to see how some of the individual names will perform. And Target is an example, 2.1% relative to 1.3 for the spider. And Amazon is expected to do really well for the last five days of the month. 3% performance, 3.06 relative to 1.37. And Costco is 1.91. So so that Amazon story, online shopping, that, that theme could really give um, XRT and any of the retailers some, some extra juice. Um, now, now uh, we had Target really rally um, up to about Wednesday or Tuesday last week or whatever, then it fell off um, quite substantially. Uh, so it's trading at a discount right now to its sort of 20 day area. So it could be, you know, it could be a good bounce back. I'm not recommending, I'm just saying we're not, you know, disclaimer, we're not analysts, we're not advisors, um, and we may end up owning the position, you know, whatever. Uh, so, but it's at a discount, you know, it's sitting down substantially from where it was, about $15 down from there. And of the last five days, it's expected to do better the first two or three. Uh, the mm -hmm. last day is expected to be down. So you might get more bang for your buck the next one, two, or three days rather than um, the full five days for, for Target. But now Amazon seems to be like the mo most robust signal of the, of, of the Almanac uh, ETF. Yeah, well, it has stocks. been. It has been for sure, um, and it's it's way up there. It's almost back to its uh, all-time highs here. So it's got a, just a little bit to go to tag it. But um, you know, Friday it did pull back quite a bit, about nineteen dollars, almost twenty dollars pulled back. Um, so 
it, uh, it it needs to, you know, if it's going to do anything substantial, it needs to clear into brand new all time highs again, you know. Yeah. Good. Well, I mean, I not a not a lot of people, you know, that are retail traders, you know, play exclusively in Amazon, but uh, it's a very expensive stock. So. I mean, that's the research I found for this week so far. I mean, do you have anything else? Uh... On your radar. No. Um, so, what are what are the uh, what are the best uh, best sort of groups to focus on? You think uh, for the long side? The best ones are um, again uh, biotech. Yeah. Uh, and Nasdaq, QQQ, the SMH. Mm -hmm. uh, also XRT and consumer discretionary, and even financials a bit. So, what's weaker in the metals and oil commodities? Gold, okay. Silver. Uh, oil, uh, EEM, emerging markets. So uh, it seems like U.S. big cap um, people consuming and building. E even the yeah, I think uh, Arc, even the Arc funds are, are expected to do fairly well too. So it's a risk on kind of undertone. I think even IWM in the backdrop there should be stronger. So uh, yeah, and that's what we're seeing pre market right right now too. IWM's uh, the leader of the the four horsemen. So it's right. like a little risk on undertone with um, a little more emphasis in retail and discretionary. Yeah. So what uh, what made the queues so strong this last uh, week or so? I mean, they've been outpacing the other guys. What do you attribute that to? Just a rally in the year end, right? So um, all the naysayers that said uh, correction is imminent, um, everything is overdone. That wall of worry has just created more chasing of the same stock, right? Those apples at an all time high again. Um, so I just think it's uh, people run out of ideas and they keep chasing <laughs> the same things that have worked, right? <laughs> Especially in the year end, the final month. Yeah, well, we've got, um, let's just see for the week here, performance wise. Um, let's see, uh, I'll sort it by. So, yeah, looks like looks like we had a pretty good comeback in like Myrna and Novax, you know, BNTX, into Regeneron, Etsy, Trade Desk, Micron. So these are some of the things that that uh, facilitated that uh, Nasdaq 100 of going up well, so the much. Well, vaccine right? news. I mean, they approved the booster shots for all adults. So that's going to benefit all the vaccine. Makers, so that that's some wind in its back as well. <clears throat> yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, but we now we are seeing uh, more stuff show up on on the poor performance side in the oils like Apache and things. So definitely going to uh, take a look through that and see if we can press any of those names. So I think it's going to be a, a maybe a good week. Um, it it certainly should be more historically in keeping with what it's done before i mean that would be my guess um, and not too much of a weird deviance from it like we've seen sometimes this year when uh, you had you had your seasonality and then it just seemed to you know get run over by some macro thing right so i think this will be more in keeping with what it's normally been like so that's my take and with that we'll uh, let you go have a good night all right thanks a lot bye-bye yeah take care